All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of H1Z1 Dead Feature Rant. I'm your host, Legendary Neurotoxin. Uh, Reverend Kremchek will be joining us a little bit later on. He's just uh, running a little late right now. Uh, so I'm just going to get started with things. So people complain a lot that you know they want to see gameplay of H1Z1 when they come to the show here. So time to deliver. Up here is the video of the last live broadcast. Uh, Jimmy Wisenhunt and Adam Clegg are the uh, main features and... Uh, uh, that fellow there, I unfortunately don't remember his name, but he's, um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a uh, Daisy player. Um, watch the video, though, uh, if you haven't. There's a lot of good content in there. I'm not really going to be talking about it as much, so much as just, you know, letting you kind of see it there while we go along. I mean, there's definitely stuff to talk about from it. But this is uh, pretty much just talking about all sorts of this, that, and the other uh, H1Z1 related, kind of continuing back off from the uh, the notes from last time. So, in the past two episodes, we only got just up to the 18 and a half minute mark. Player unknown, the developer of the Battle Royale mod. That's awesome. I should have known that. That's really, really cool. <laughs> You know, he didn't really say too much in the background. Um, with the camera resolution, I, I didn't really look too closely. I thought it was just Greg sitting back there. Um, I had no idea. Um, you know, because wearing the shirt and just kind of chilling back there. And so, uh, then when they introduced and, you know, kind of talked, I was like, oh, interesting. Very cool. Yeah. So, so very cool. So uh, the one of the things that was highlighted in the uh, the Q and A a couple of weeks back was the uh, idea that character creation is not very in depth. You know, it's a game where you've got a limited lifespan, and the goal for gameplay is, you know, short lives. You're not the the game isn't meant where you're gonna have, you know, a character alive for months and months and months. If you do it, that's awesome, but. Um, you know, if somebody dies within, say, five minutes of starting up, nothing to feel bad about. Look at that refraction on the water. Isn't that lovely? I like that. Now, uh, take in mind, the water that was designed for Landmark, the, the oceans that we have for that already, um, the water looks great. It doesn't look like a repeating texture. It doesn't look like a, uh, a tarp blowing in the wind or whatever, a big blue tarp. Uh, it looks really, really nice. So I'm expecting we're getting a lot of that same sort of uh, quality appearance in H1Z1 as well. It's good stuff. So um, purchases using SC will be possible. Um, I think we all knew that. <laughs> that, that, that yeah. Um, a point that's been talked about a lot and... Uh, I'm pretty sure most folks know at this point, but I still see it coming up, so maybe not. Female characters. We don't have female characters going into the start of early access. We just have the white dude. Why do we have the white dude? Why is it a white dude? The answer is they needed a head scan for the character. They had a head scan for Billy Yates, so, you know, they used that and made the appropriate body for it, and that's how they got their character simplest method makes sense to me if they had a head scan of somebody else it probably would have gone with that instead um or you know equally who knows coin flip but whatever it's um it's just fine it works just fine and you know we're going to be seeing a lot more variation as the game goes on don't even worry about it Um, so there are going to be planes and airdrops. Uh, it's already been confirmed that there's the airdrops. That was the big focus at SOE Live this year. But the question was about planes. Now, they could definitely give us planes. I mean, it's basically using the same technology as Planet Side 2. So there's no reason why they couldn't, you know, drop a scythe in if they wanted to. That wouldn't make any sense. But, you know, 
via supremacy everywhere. Uh, but anyway, that's, um, that's one of the things that they said, not initially, they're probably not going to give us the ability to fly planes. And it's something that I would rather have as something that you spend a ticket on and you spawn in an area where you get a plane and you get to try to learn to fly it and basically using, you know, the tickets as a way to let people learn how to fly so if they do actually find the plane in the real servers, they can access it and do stuff with it. Strange version of Landmark. Should say H1Z1. Alright, oh. Well, put in H1Z1 again and update it again. <laughs> alright, alright. That's weird. Anyway, so, and thanks for the catch there, Max. I don't know why it was not updated. So, the, um, the idea of zombies being just contained by doors and walls, um, they, they can knock them down. They can destroy them. Maybe not every zombie will. Maybe not every zombie is strong enough. Who knows? Uh, looks like they've got some little bit of bugs they're dealing with here and there. <laughs> So that's um that's definitely something that I think is a really nice feature. And, you know, they won't they won't go for, you know, walls and doors and stuff if they have no vit motivation to. So potentially you could trap zombies inside a building if they just don't feel like breaking out, they won't. <laughs> Oh, you're on vacation, Tom. You want to jump on here? Cycles it hurts. <laughs> Let's see. Still waiting on Krem. He is not back yet. Anyway, so you can see them driving around in their cop car over there, having a lot of fun with it. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Anyway, um, geez, I haven't done a solo one of these in a while. Still at the office. Wow. Damn. So is, does the, um, has the vacation officially started for everybody or for some folks or how does that work? I'm actually kind of curious about that now. Um, anyway, yeah, lockers to store gear. There's going to be lockers. You'll be able to store gear in them. Uh, I don't know how permanent they are, if other people will be able to come through and bust them open or not, but that's definitely something they're planning to put in. Swimming. Yes, right now we'll be able to swim across the surface. Later on we'll probably be able to dive down and swim underwater. We've got the stuff for that right now on Landmark, but I don't think it's the same skeleton and character rig for both games, so they would have to basically do all of the art for the process. Um... You know, that's a lot of animations, especially to make sure that it looks realistic. And because I'm sure drowning would have to be, you know, one of the things that comes in early, which totally not a thing in Landmark. Uh, losing items on death is, you know, basically how it's going to work. You don't lose the access to things that you've made Station Cast purchases for uh, that are aesthetics, like... Um, you know, I don't, I'm not going to lose morning wood the, the first time I have one and, and lose it. It's just a skin for the nail bat. So whenever I craft a nail bat, I can have morning wood instead. Um, so that's kind of one of the ways that the, the station cash purchases are going to work. And it's pretty cool. But, uh, going back to the subject, you, you will lose everything in your inventory when you die, and you're not going to spawn with anything beyond the defaults. That's just the way the game works. <laughs> Serial, how's it going? So, there's a lot of animals. I, you know, there's the rabbits, the deer, the wolves, the bear, the ravens, the fish. I believe we've seen chickens. They're going to be coming at some point. I would imagine we're going to see, you know, other types of birds, uh, 
some frogs maybe who knows <laughs> it's difficult to lose morning <laughs> you are right calm but you missed the u in there morning wood not morning wood you know i guess this it's pronounced the same way <laughs> Yeah, Robin207, what you're seeing up there is H1Z1 being played by Jimmy Wizen Hunt and Adam Clegg. I believe it's actually Adam Clegg that's doing the steering. <laughs> yeah, death is actually going to be a pretty big deal in this game. I mean, when you die in H1Z1, you die in real life. That's how it works, right? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, uh, D and D in the seventies. Anyway, um, weather is going to affect zombies. Rain can inhibit their hearing. Uh, nighttime, in fact, can impair their vision. So there's actually a lot of different ways. You know, they're going to be affected. Their senses are going to be affected the same way that uh, players are going to be affected. But the difference is. Players aren't using smell of vision. We aren't relying on, you know, all of our senses available because they just can't be conveyed to us the same way. So we actually aren't as impaired as the zombies are in some ways when weather does come around. Though in other ways we are because, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many zombies die, but, you know, there's only one of your character. And if it dies to any pack of zombies, the zombies still win. <laughs> No matter how many you take down. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that, Robin. I was just joking. <laughs> a little bit, Max. I mean, it is. this is definitely a lot more uh, adult and mature, I would say, than really any of the other games in SOE's portfolio right now. Like, yeah, there's some, there might be some gritty stuff that you have to do in the EverQuest games. and Yeah, you know, it's kind of juicy to headshot somebody in uh, Planet Side 2, but, you know, mostly, you know, all the games in the, in the portfolio are more or less PG-13. Uh, this is the only game that I feel maybe could start branching a little bit towards that like R rating sort of territory. And that's totally fine. You know, it's good to have an adult game in the mix. Not like, you know, wings hanging out everywhere simulator, uh like what was it? Is that Rust that does that? But, you know, to have it that it kinda steps things up and has a little bit more of a gritty environment. Rethink having death you're ridiculous, cuz my <laughs> Yeah, it was calm. <laughs> and it was with, not to. Anyway. Um, let's see. So, there's going to be craftable traps. Um, oh, I also didn't talk about uh, snow. Of course snow is going to affect zombies. I would, I'd imagine it's going to slow them all down in varying different ways. I would wonder if uh, zombies are actually able to get to the point where they fully freeze, and if so, uh, do you have to go knock them over or smash them or whatever, or uh, will they just thaw and be fine again? Uh, Stone Glade, the way that works is if your corpse is accessed by a zombie uh, rather than being accessed by a player after you've died, um then the loot is distributed to zombies in the area. So if a player kills you, they'll be able to get the loot. But if a player kills you and then, you know, a zombie goes and feeds on your corpse, um, they can't run up and grab that loot. They'll have to then go and kill those zombies to get the loot that had been dropped from you. So that's one of the ways that loot will kind of be accumulated onto zombies. And large zombie hordes will sometimes... Uh, have piles of loot on them, but you know, not every one of them will, and not every zombie in a horde will. Uh, Shanu boy, is there crafting of stone structures, walls, and stuff, or just wood? Um, I believe there's going to be um, 
you know stone and stuff available right now there's wood and i think there's metal like if you get a, a you know corrugated uh metal siding or whatever like you get for a uh, uh one of those um not mobile homes but the uh little modular homes the ones that are just kind of put up real quick um stuff like that could be uh use for siding in fact we do have models that use that brick and stuff like that itself i would imagine but not 100 percent sure what's your kills crime check and game car sense and that's it you kill crime check for real <laughs> Some stuff and backpacks full of stuff with guns. Yeah, yeah, Max. I'm sure some will. I mean, if you're if you've got a player who's, you know, really fully looted up, but they have a terrible internet connection, and you know they go link dead while they're fighting a horde. Unfortunately, they might just get swallowed up in that, and because they were uh, logged out in the act in the act of combat, they died, and their stuff gets distributed to the zombies it's expected that some zombies will have your stuff <laughs> yeah for sure oh man all right i think reverend kremchek is ready to join us here <laughs> ah. Oh, thank you for the host. Grammy. Hey, what's going on? Not much. How you doing? I am great. Finally out of traffic. That's the best part. Cool. Well, it looks like Skype has changed their configuration, so Oh, good. That's helpful. Uh, not in the helpful kind of way. Well, yeah, well, I was being sarcastic anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, it looks like it'll line up uh, more or less okay. So I'm going to bring the Karim Chekistan on standby. Here we go. All right, here we are. Here we are. Here he and is. And I have my H1Z1 swag back. If Hell yeah. Everyone will see when I'm up there. And your Sprite Zero and whatever you've got next to it. This is this is Kari's. <laughs> this is Kari's. This is Kari's. This is mine. It's the only thing on the desk that's mine. Right my my whiskey and my my real sprite that I got from McDonald's. Welcome to Reverend Kremchek's house, everybody. <laughs> yes, everything is not mine. Nothing is mine, actually. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Do you want so. to see everything else that's not mine? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's see Baby Swoop's uh, Christmas presents. You have to unwrap them and show them to us. There you go. <laughs> Talk about Baby Swoops. I got some of Baby Swoops' stuff on uh, here, too. By the way. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the subject. I mean, yes. that's some... Okay, no, hold on. Actually, on the subject, that's some weird stuff to salvage. I hope you guys are taking that sort of stuff into account, like... You know, going along at some point, and you know, you'll find some house, and there's you know, just a, a couple of computers, and there's just a bunch of drinks, and like you know, booze, <laughs> and you know, all sorts of stuff, exactly. and you know, some, some snacks house. and wrappers and stuff, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's uh, you use the green screen for like eight pieces of fabric or something, right. Sounds pretty good to me. Sounds pretty good. Ah, all right. So we've just been kind of going through the notes here, and we've got the uh, Adam Clegg and Jimmy, Jimmy Wisenhunt uh, session playing up there. It's only uh, about an hour, so at some point we're going to uh, rewind or um, um, I guess restart it from the beginning. So there's right. there's you know some bugs here and there. Obviously, you can see it's still not ready to be in our hands yet but it's a hell of a lot closer and it looks beautiful now my goodness yeah quick question how mm -hmm. do i get the, the the chat to show back up in in the screen here 
Oh, it's happening in mine, just not yours. On the lower right? Yeah, no, like the on the right hand side, you know, I usually have the chat. Why isn't that showing up? Oh. Can't see what people are saying. Uh, refresh. Anyway. No, this is a newly opened tab. Oh, oh full, wait, full, I got it. Yeah. I got it. You're no, there's goofball. little arrows on the top. You're a goofball. Okay, never mind. Uh, Just yes, it. back on the subject. Twinkies. Yes, Twinkies, most definitely. Twinkies are something that will be very important in oh yeah the zombie apocalypse and many other food things that are designed to never go bad and keep forever they don't get moldy or anything they just get really stale over time and eventually turn to powdery dust but it's nutritious powdery dust <laughs> nutritious ish ish yeah, nutritious nu ish nutritious ish, <laughs> nutritious -ish. Ah, uh, never mind. See, we have Mr. Cycles McCurts here. Howdy, man. Mm. Mm. That's another thing that'll be good. Gatorade, my goodness. Yeah, there you go. So it's delicious. That's, that's why I got a big old mug of over there. Not to be endorsing things here. <laughs> no, it'll be a different brand of donuts, Robin. That's Gatorade. <laughs> Drink of streamers. <laughs> Maximilian says, the question is, Kremchek, are you yours or are you Kari's? Hey, Come hey, on, man. Hey. Think about that. Hey, 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 I'm married. Hey. All <laughs> right. So catching you up to where we're at in the notes, and I'll let me send you the uh, the link to the notes again here. Yeah, one second. I got a YouTube from you. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Thank you. Stop complaining. There's your notes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sweet. <laughs> Shanu boy, nice one. <laughs> okay, so the subject of crafting traps. We can craft traps, punji sticks, which are the uh, the wooden sh sticks that you've uh, sharpened the points on, and then you. Uh, you dip them in poop for good measure. Um, oh, yeah. Or then, zombie blood might be a good thing. Eh, maybe a little bit of everything. Just got your uh, your toxic cocktail. Okay. <laughs> That's good. You can do some amount of landmines. I don't know how uh, um, crude they are or if they're more technical sorts of things. There's bear traps. We all know what bear traps are. You don't want to stand in a bear trap. Right. Gatorade has sugar. Surely you can ferment it. We've thought about that cycle so many times. We just never did it. One of these days we'll get some like ale yeast. Like in real life? Yeah. Okay. Get, get some That's ale yeast disgusting. and just give it a shot and see what you say. Hey, don't say it. You can't knock it until I try it. Maybe I'll do that for <laughs> SOE Live this year. There you go. There you go. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Sean, no, you can't say that. You don't know. It could be pretty good. <laughs> Who do you think is going to be more popular? The person that is fermenting Gatorade and bringing that to us we live or the person bringing really nice whiskey? Yeah, mine takes effort. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. He just takes money. <laughs> you care. Right. I just want to buy people. Yeah, I don't know if I care, actually. It's, I think I'm actually turning everybody into guinea pigs at that point. It's like, ha ah, let's try this experiment. I don't know what the finished product tastes like either. <laughs> yeah, you taste it. If you don't die, I'll have some more. Well, I care the hangover it gets you. All right, all right, all right, all right. Barbed wire is another big one, and barbed wire, there's, you know, real deal barbed wire, and then there's crude stuff you can do, like just taking a bunch of wire coat hangers and kind of tying them together and sharpening the ends of them or whatever. You can sure. make a makeshift barbed wire basically out of you know that or you know, a spool of some, uh, you know, some th thick metal wire of some sort. There's a lot of different ways to do it. It doesn't, it won't always necessarily be as effective. It's not necessarily like razor wire. Razor wire is a little bit of a different story, but mm -hmm. if you don't have leather gloves, you're not going to access that anyway, or you're losing your fingers. That's just how it is. Right. <clears throat> yeah, razor wire is a nice way to go if you can, if you can get it up. Yeah. 
I was really glad when they eventually took down the razor wire from the uh, perimeters of all the high schools in uh, town here, because we didn't really wow. need that. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't know if it was all of them. It was definitely the one across from here, though. Was that to keep us, uh, everyone in or to keep everyone out? Well, out because the it was kind of facing outward towards the street. It was kind of angled, but... Gotcha. Uh, you know, it's not it's not really good either way. It's not a good situation. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, rabbit traps for small game, and those aren't going to be something that somebody's going to you know get trapped in. It's not like a an attack trap. That's just uh, you know a bucket with a stick and yeah. something tied to it, and you know they they eat the carrot, and the bucket falls on them, and then they're stuck. See. Okay, so Cycles McHurt says we will be enlight enlightened if we Google Gatorade being fermented. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, I'm going to leave that one for another time. <laughs> that one's that one's on another tab here. I'm going to check that after the show. Oh, Cereal has a good point. Keep people like you from peeing on the school all the time, Krem. Well, I mean, if you really just don't give a damn, you can just be on the school from the outside. It's a wire fence. <laughs> just make it just make it a, just... an electrified wire fence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, they didn't have one of that. That would be pushing it. Um, <laughs> so, speaking of things to keep people out of stuff, the <laughs> subject of anti-cheat came up. and. Nice segue. Oh my goodness. So I I actually did dive a little bit and start reading a little bit of some of the forums and some of the comments of some of the people trying to make cheats for Planet Side 2. And my favorite was the one where the dude was saying that his uh serial number, uh his hard drive serial got banned. So, you know, they're they're really going kind of far and wide to be able to, you know, keep somebody out that is causing problems. They they don't sure. screw around. Um, they might not do it for everybody. Like, if I had a, an account get banned for you know something stupid, um, I, I if I I don't think my other accounts would necessarily be banned immediately. Like, I wouldn't get the full IP ban and all that. I, I don't think I'd be getting banned for anything anytime soon anyway. It's uh, we don't have that kind of relationship, us and SOE. <laughs> But, you know, if something if something silly did happen, you know, versus if somebody is, you know, fully legitimately making like hundreds of accounts trying to make and sell and try out cheats. Yeah, that person's probably going to be flagged completely differently and actually investigated for it um, in terms of what they actually do and how they actually do things. Um, they don't reveal that. That's, you know. Part of the secret, part of the magic, is not to reveal how the security systems work. But it's pretty solid. Don't uh, don't give it a try. Just play the game legit. <laughs> this is my yeah, best advice. Sure. And yeah. don't worry, you know, if somebody actually is legitimately cheating, not just you know exploiting something that needs to be fixed, but full on legitimately cheating, um, they'll be dealt with. Just make sure to report them. Yep, that's true. Mm -hmm. Challenge accepted, Cycle Hertz said. <laughs> I don't know. Hertz. To get banned, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure which challenge he's talking about. But I'm sure. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Good to see you then. First time catching the show. Awesome. Wow, first time ever. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Rock out. I barely made it, so good job. Yeah, seriously. That bank. It's like a freaking <laughs> zombie horde in there. <laughs> man uh so yeah don't worry about cheats in h1z1 if you want to if you want to see how bad it is go play planet side 2 and find cheaters and it's like no uh, they're they're not really that present <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's like half the people that that say this game is going to fail they're like well, it's just going to be another mm. Daisy Hackfest. And I'm like, I don't think so. Nah, I don't think so at all. 
partially because it's also on their own servers. So you have to go through right. the entire login process and stuff just to have access. And because it's a paid early access, and this is one of the genius things of it being a paid early access, if somebody is getting accounts banned for doing abusive stuff and making new accounts, money. yeah, they got to spend 20 bucks every time. And <laughs> that, that adds up. Even if someone is actually trying, you know, if someone's trying to actually sell the cheats and, you know, they're trying to, you know, try to justify that the expense of all the accounts is going to pay off when they have a successful cheat. No. It's going to be gone within hours, if not, you know, immediately. Yeah. Bullet physics include drag and gravity, looking at wow. including wind. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, that's some good stuff. Yeah, now I'm really excited for it. The uh, The physics are going to be great. I mean, the, the, the bullet physics already work pretty well in Planet Side 2. And it's something that folks sometimes don't realize with, with a gun. Uh, and I think it's going to be communicated the same way in uh, H1Z1. Bullets don't go in a straight line until they exit, you know, Earth's atmosphere. They have an arc. They go up, they yeah. go down. And where the scope is set is trying to assume that, you know, that specific location is where your target's at. Let's say it's zeroed for 200 meters. If your target's at 200 meters, you can aim and know that your bullet's going to hit exactly where the crosshair is. If they're not, if they're closer, you know, or a little bit further, you'll have to compensate uh, accordingly. If they're a lot further away, you're going to have to aim up a lot further. But it's, it's something that's going to be learnable and knowable and you know, very much based in realism. So be excited for it. Very much so. Very much so. <laughs> like an arrow just a lot faster and further. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you're going to spawn with, from what I understand, flashlight, flares, and bandages. A flashlight, I think two flares and some bandages. So. Here's my question, though. Mm -hmm. When have you ever had a power outage and you didn't need, like, you didn't have less than 30 minutes on your flashlight? For some reason. Because you didn't use it for, like, seven years. You finally are using it. <laughs> Batteries are dead at that point. Are we going to have a... a, a are we going to have a, a time where our flashlight goes out, or is it just going to be a live long forever, live on forever kind of? Well, consider it's an accelerated day-night cycle. If we're talking about, you know, battery times and stuff like that kind of syncing up with real-world time, yeah, 30 minutes would be a hell of a long battery life. Mm -hmm. I mean, relative to the server, if it's a 24-hour server, then yeah, I could see that one battery lasting for, you know, quite a while. Yeah, I mean, is there going to be a point where it doesn't, though, is my question. Because if you you should be going out trying to find things, not relying on the things that you have, but going out and always trying to find bigger and better things. So if you don't do that, you're going to run out of light because your flashlight's not going to live forever. Well, what's better than a flashlight? More batteries, another flashlight. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you just you're just gonna have to deal because there's maybe not better there's nothing possibly better than a flashlight, but you're gonna need another one or you're gonna need something different because you're not always gonna have your flashlight. If you have to have a torch because y you have flint, fine. That's better than a, a flashlight that's going to burn out in twenty minutes. Well what about an old timey or survival style hand crank flashlight? If that's what you have, that's what you have. I think that would actually make a lot more sense. I don't really yeah. know how sturdy those are as weapons, so you would have to put it down to engage something in combat. Yeah, for sure. Be pretty cool. <laughs> Serial, two flashlights. Yeah, two that's pretty flashlights. much what I'm What's better than one flashlight? Two flashlights. Dual wield flashlights. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, I have. This fun fact I... many alkaline batteries can be very slowly recharged. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, so it'd be like a flashlight in one hand to to watch him, and a flashlight in the other hand to to bop him. 
to hit hit him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know what kind of uh, two hand and dual wield sorts of mechanics they're going to have. I really hope that there's going to be some sorts of. Um, you know, maybe not initially, but later on, classifications of one-handed versus two-handed items. So you could yeah. potentially carry a flashlight and a pistol, for example, or do do like they oh, do yeah. in the uh, in the movies where they're holding the flash. Uh, do I have a flashlight around? No. Uh, they're just, holding it like I'll above just, the yeah, I'll use, the yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the no, they're doing it that way. They're 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 holding the flashlight this way, and while they're bracing their their you know hand across it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like adding adding a flashlight to your gun or adding a, you know, laser scope or not really, but you know yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Dual wielding five cell mag lights, five cells. Yeah, five cells would be pretty ideal for the, uh, for the thing. The thing is though, I've, I've hit things with mag lights before a couple of times, and you know the ends of those things are actually not that sturdy. The end can pop off if you hit something. Uh, so if you're hitting something with the maglet, you definitely have to hit with more of the, uh, like, the middle of it, not with the tip. Just, what if uh, you hit with flashlights? What was that? Um, oh, I had just, uh, just a piece of wood or whatever. I just wanted to know, like, is it viable to actually hit something with a flashlight? Does it actually work as a weapon? What's it feel like? What's the recoil? And it's like, oh, man... The cat popped off. What the? That's stupid. Why would you hit something with this? Huh. <laughs> then you I don't have a flashlight anymore. That's what asking you right now. Besides <laughs> the, the whole science thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anybody asking that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm the voice of their thoughts. You're, you're drunk. I want to say go home, you're drunk, but you're already home and... I am home, but I need to be drunk. Maybe that's the thing. Poor, poor yourself. Maybe I have, home. maybe I have neuro syndrome. <laughs> yeah, I'm terrible until I'm drunk. You don't, you don't get right until you have. Yeah, well, that's. I mean, that's all media. You know, you don't, you aren't that's right true. until you had a couple of drinks. That's true. <laughs> all right. So, you can. Um, the 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 thing about purchased items and I talked about this a little bit earlier they're degraded on death um, so if you die and somebody loots your stuff they can get the stuff that you had but it's gonna be a lower quality version so if I've got my you know if you if you for some reason decide to pick up my morning wood and you're holding my morning wood in your hands it's uh, <laughs> it's gonna have lower durability than if I was holding the morning wood in my hands um, so, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to get through that one with a straight face, but yeah, yeah, no, that's, um, yeah, basically that's, that's how it works is, uh, as somebody, you know, dies with an item that's been, you know, using a, a station cash skin, it will, and by the way, look at the video up there. It's just some really, really nice stuff. You can see how much the, uh, the environment is upgraded and improved. Um, yeah. You know, if you if you lose items that you've purchased um, through death, they're not going to be in as good a shape. And the purpose of that is that uh, they um, will eventually break down. Either they'll be at a low enough quality the next time you die, or someone dies with them that they go away in the world, or otherwise there might be other durability loss just from wear and tear that will also, yeah. um, you know, break it down. Uh yeah yeah for sure. Uh, and Remio. for anybody that doesn't know, Morningwood is uh... a <laughs> he can't spell. <laughs> Morningwood is a weapon on the game. <laughs> it was just for something fun that that Nora was saying. <laughs> yeah, Morningwood is a um, uh, a special bat Club that was nail, right? available as the nail bat. Um, yeah. It was a skin that you could get for the twenty dollar year subscription for SOE Live twenty fourteen. It was only available for like a week. I got it because I wanted morning wood. Um, and also came with a bunch of neat emotes that can be used in chat. <laughs> Romeo says, my question in your example, actually Romeo is what we learned. My question in your example, do the owners of the morning wood respawn with it? Every no. Morning? I no. mean, no. You do not respawn with a crafted item. You would have to 
um, you know, when you when you respawn, you're just going to have the flashlights, the bandage, and the flares. So you're going to have to get all the materials and craft up a new nail bat in order to um, walk around with morning wood in your hands again. Ah. Romeo. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> TR scum. Um... The on-death stats are potentially going to be heavily detailed. You could see potentially a heat map of all the areas that you've accessed, the time that you were alive, what kind of things you killed, what kinds of things damaged you, maybe even who actually damaged you and who you interacted with. Um, that's going to be awesome. It's going to be great to be able to go through your stats. It's almost like a, a, a you know players after a game breaking down the footage and kind of seeing what worked, what went well, and you know that sort of stuff. I don't know how detailed it's going to be, how far back, and what kind of history it's going to have, but they've already got the tool in Planet Side and it works really well. Yeah, Michael Flatley, it's January fifteenth, so I'm really really happy to see that we'll be able to get a lot of information after we die because that's that's really nice we don't get a lot of information during gameplay and that's intentional it's supposed to be you know more of a you know minimalist ui and you have to focus on survival um but the fact that when you die you can kind of get a full read out of what happened is really really awesome Yes, for sure. And Michael Flatley knows that, by the way. Yeah, yeah he I know. See, I, yeah, I already knew. He has <laughs> that everywhere he goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's because other people can read. It's January 15th, 2016! Bum, bum, bum! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go out and practice your baseball pitches, Michael Flatley. <laughs> Uh, when it feels <laughs> cycles yeah seriously um so this is not a game with dismembering this is something that's been talked about they just didn't decide to go that direction um i can imagine for many reasons particularly because it doesn't localize to a lot of places so it would be a lot of and I'm talking a lot of time and effort and resources being spent getting uh, the dismembering system in place just so it can only be used in like half the countries that the game can be played in. Um, so instead of having a limited gameplay experience for some, just don't have it there. Put the resources elsewhere and, you know, work on other stuff. I personally prefer that, actually. It's... If you want to get into the dismembering stuff, there's a game called The Forest out there. It's totally a dismembering cannibal simulator. You know, that's that's what you're looking for. Um, this is which has its place. It does. It does, and it's just not this. It's a. It's got really nice art and renders and stuff to it, and there's a lot of you know, good ways of conveying the the suspense and you know how the scene is set up when you start the game and everything. Just really, really good for what it is, but it's not H1Z1. H1Z1 is a completely different flavor. You know, the full MMO status of it, that there will be the persistent worlds. Um, of course, the high security of it also is going to be really nice. I don't really know if the forest has multiplayer, but um, you know. I, think that it does. Oh, I love that part in the video where he's rolling around in uh, prone there. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. 2016. Jumping the ground and then rolling back. <laughs> Cry into your beard. <laughs> <laughs> At the start of the game, how many days since the H1Z1 breakout? What they're showing seems a year or more rust and the like. 42? I mean, the it's weeks to months, but keep in mind, yeah. the area that they're depicting might be some of the more kind of rural areas that are already kind of broke down to begin with. So, I was going to say, go to Middle America, and then you'll see. It's yeah. not all shiny new vehicles. Yeah. No, I don't even have to go that far. There's places here in uh, 
in my town <laughs> that, that are like, oh man, that's terrible. Exactly. <laughs> what exactly. country am I in right like now? A little bit run down part of your own town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. There's a fist fight going on there, of course, in the video. And uh, it's it's that is kind one of, of the parts that I watched. I gotta really. say, it's really awkward watching Adam Clegg play in third person. And even though they said first person's a little wonky right now, every time I've played with first person, it's been fairly solid. The only yeah. thing I would want is something to let me know, you know, how close, how close or far I am from my target. Even if it's just like a little meter or something, that lets me know when I'm in punching range. So that way it kind of counteracts the depth perception loss from playing a game on a 2D screen. That's the only thing I would want for Melee to really be absolutely perfect in, uh, in H1Z1. Right. For sure. And I, uh, I actually prototyped something like that you know, back in college, but <laughs> didn't end up using it for anything. <laughs> Who's gaming now? Thank you, you very much for the host. Ah, it looks terrible. I'd have to do something a little cleaner looking. It would make their eyes bleed and they would kill me. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, that Neuro guy's playing. Ha ha, we're going to spawn an airdrop right on his head. Full of zombies. Ha ha, you're dead. Screw you. <laughs> and that would just be like every day. <laughs> yes, every day. Um, so, you know, I should definitely draw something up, though. So, man, we went a really far direction from dismembering. But anyway, um, we can own pets. That's going to be a thing, but it's not going to be a thing in early access. And they said it's not necessarily going to be a tamed wild animal. Um, they definitely tease that if you want to try a taming wild animal, go ahead. But don't expect good results. I guess we were actually following up from Stoneglade's question, weren't we? Um, and we still kind of went on a big tangent. Yeah, weeks to months since the uh, outbreak. Um, yep. So pets. I mean, pets make sense. If it's only weeks to months, then it wouldn't be such a big deal. But I would imagine like three to five years down the road as the, um, you know, unneutered and spayed, the, the, the natural free roaming domestic dogs. Uh, kind of start mixing and interbreeding with the wolf populations, it's going to kind of start getting this almost watered-down version of the wolf out in the wild. Right. Well, I wonder, are, are we going to have, uh, let's say, three years down the road in real time. So it's December 23rd, 2017, and uh, let's just pretend that we're still doing this show, which we might be. Well, probably. Yeah. So let's say it's three years exactly from today. Are we still talking about this game like it's months, uh, like the apocalypse happened three months ago? Gee, I really hope not. I hope that they advance time throughout the, uh, the course of gameplay, though that's something that they might not actually want to approach until the game's actually live. They might simulate it now, um, which would be a, a great time to do it, but... Mm -hmm. I'm definitely hoping that, because, you know, it would be weird a few years down the road if it's still just the weeks to months sort of thing. And I really don't right. think that they would actually do that. I think they are going to potentially age the servers as the game goes on. And that actually... You, you either have to do that or you have to just throw out all of the lore at some point and just make it... It, it is what it is, basically. Yeah, well, it would either be that or... Um, uh, some sort of weird like time dilation thing that the area towards where you start the game is an area that depicts weeks to months, and the further you go out from that, the it kind of depicts longer and longer after the apocalypse. That would be a weird way to do things, though. Yeah. Ultimately, I think the best way is have basically your old servers and your new servers. Uh, every you know few months, you spin up a new server. So people who want to see what the, the very beginning looks like and play on from right. that get the opportunity. Um, but people that want to play on something that's been around for you know since the game came out and that giant established population there, it's totally available for them. Yeah. And Romeo says, not sure if they want to make the game look crappier and crapper as time goes on on purpose. It's not that it's going to look crappier. It's going to look more degraded. Yeah. 
So crappier doesn't uh, crappier or, or nice doesn't mean. <laughs> I think he means degraded. He just said crappier because yeah. Don't Maybe. worry about it. Don't worry about it. I don't know if he means like graphically, like people won't like it at that point. If that's the case, that's not. It's just uh, no. not the case. To be perfectly honest, this is still just the very beginning with the graphics too. They can go a long way. I really yeah. hope if you do a campfire inside a house, it's gonna just light that damn thing up or. It's going to cause a situation that you want to evacuate and leave it alone. Because right. I want to be able to just yeah. burn down houses. And eventually that's something they might want to do. But right now they, they've said they kind of pulled back on the amount of things that can be burnt down because it would be a permanent forest fire simulator. And while that is John Smedley's ideal H1Z1 world... Um, that kind of defeats the purpose of the game for a lot of people. True. It's like, yes. welcome to Smetley's Hell. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would just love the ability to, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, there's someone that you are trying to get, quote unquote, get, all right? And uh, they go into the ho their own house, but they haven't really um, done much to it. But you know that they have a sniper rifle, so it's aimed right at the door. So if you come in, they're sh gonna shoot you in the face. What would be cool is if you could just light that house up, wait for them to run out, then you shoot them in the face. Yeah, throw a Molotov cocktail through the window. Have that the fire yeah. just kind of spread from that even. Yeah, say well, good luck. Either die and I'll come in and loot you when the fire's gone, or come out and fight. That'd be cool. So, Mamcha, food and bullets becoming more rare. Um, packaged food, yes, but animals in the wild uh, probably even be more prevalent than they were before. Uh, as for bullets, yeah, potentially, um, especially because people aren't going to be manufacturing them at the same rate. Let me start the video back over. Um, manufacturing at the same rate that we're going to be expending them, not by a long shot, but at least you mm -hmm. know there's going to be because the continued expansion of ter territory there's potentially going to be a you know infinite little caches and hideaways here and there of bullets and ammo it might be something yeah. that later on in the game they add a little element that backyards of houses may have uh ammo caches and weapon supplies and stuff in them so you you know go and find some of the uh, the places that you haven't been to for a while, and dig up the backyard a bit, and sure enough, there's some some bars of gold, you know, some some family portraits or some crap, and a couple rifles and you know enough ammo for what they thought was going to be enough to last an apocalypse. So suddenly you're the the ammo tycoon of the local region uh, <laughs> until somebody kills you and takes it. Unless you've right. got a big crew to uh, protect you while you distribute it. Right. And uh, let's see. Romeo says, I understand the rundown neglected look, but have the entire game look like that could be detrimental to the game. The entire game wouldn't look like that, though, because we are building stuff, too. We're not yeah. just... Le we won't just have the buildings. Um, we're going to be refortifying buildings. We're going to be doing... Every uh, all the Every player is probably going to have somewhere that they want to call their home. Uh, whether you create it completely from scratch or you go take a supermarket. it's uh, So the whole world's not going to look like that, but having stuff be able to run down because people aren't there or people aren't upkeeping it is, I think, that is important and, and should most definitely be in the game uh, just because the lore won't make sense that way. Yeah. So, like I said, either make it a multiplayer, you know, a multiplayer PvP game, or have some way to age the system, uh, so you're actually following lore. Yeah, I mean, there's, we'll see how they're gonna do it, and there's a lot of ways they could. They could even do it in divergent ways too, and that would be interesting because they have the capability to do that. It's just whether they want to add that much uh, differential content to it. All right. Yes. So you've got a disagreement from Com here, actually. Yeah. Um, he says uh, there should be a risk reward for everything. Lighting a player's uh, base on fire shouldn't be the best choice because the fire could destroy a lot of the supplies. 
And I, and I said, yeah, that's true. I didn't necessarily say it was the best option. I said I wanted to be an option. Why not, right? <laughs> Vandit Whitby, yes, I'm a dev. No, not on an SOE project. But anyway. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I'm developing nothing. I mean, techni it. technically, we're all on the dev team for Landmark, so. Yeah, um... there you go. Yes, then I'm a dev. <laughs> yeah. But not for H1Z1. We just, we just happen to know a lot about the game and, you know, talk up a good game and hang out with the devs and have a good time and hang out with the fans, too, and all the, all the lovely folks out there. Yep. So, the 25 minute mark, they talk about there's probably going to just be one character per server. Uh, that makes sense. There's no reason not to have more than one character per server. You don't need to have like 50 alts. Um, the only place I could see needing that would be a role playing server. And that's only if you're, what, doing some sort of silly performance or something where you need different characters to be able to access. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, that's fine. What do you think about the one character thing? Is it any issue? Yeah. No, there's no reason to have more than one character on the server. And the reason is we're not, I mean, the RP issue, sure, but we're going to be able to play on different servers for that, um, if we want to do that. And, uh, it's not that kind of game. You're supposed to die a lot, and that's what they've said. So once you die, create another character, or create a different look, or whatever. If you die, decide to RP something else. You're not going to be alive for three years, so you don't need to be able to create an alt. Yep. That is true. That is true. You're not going to last that... You're really not going to last that long. And I really don't think, you know, name reservations are going to be that big a deal. Uh, if somebody steals your name or something, it's like, oh no, whatever. You know kill them and then right. you know keep killing them until they give it up and then tell everybody no no I've got the name now stop killing somebody with that name <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about throwing smelly meat on a player's roof to attract zombies oh yeah that would be lovely I'd love to see you know meat being used for a lot of different things meat grenades are something that's been talked about quite a bit or meat mines or whatever uh, yeah, some some important. explosive to uh, attract zombies to it, and oh, it's a good trap. Yep, roll. For sure. Romeo, no, wrong game. <laughs> so fires. If you want to start a fire, you're gonna need a source. You're gonna need a lighter. You're gonna need to make a bow drill. You're going to need flares, you're going to need torches, you're going to need, you know, all sorts of stuff. Forest fires are not going to be a day one thing because the game would be on fire all day long. But potentially, forest fires might be added later on. I don't yeah, know. I mean... I, it seems like the sort of thing that if they're going to make fire that big of a deal, they would have to give us... Um, you know, hilarious firefighting stuff so people can, can run around to be the uh, the firefighters, but then it wouldn't really make sense because the scale of what you actually need to be able to put out big fires and stuff is more than just, you know, a few untrained uh, James Bond MacGyvers in one fire truck with a bunch of nasty sewage water. Yeah, gonna need the rain to keep a... Uh, Rain to, to be able to keep a fire going. Yeah, that's true. Because the weather is going to be able to change fairly dynamically. Uh, if fires are a problem for a while, whether it's something that the server does or it's just something that happens normally, big old rains and snows and stuff can come through and just put it out. And that's cool. So, yeah. s somebody asked about missions missions in H1Z1. No, there are no missions in H1Z1. The mission no is PD. to survive and not I mean not die. There's no NPC is what I meant to say. What do you mean? There are NPCs. There are animals yeah, there's, and there's zombies. No there's no There's no friendlies, which means there's no one to collect a quest from. Right. So therefore there's no missions. Yeah. 
It's well, it's the sort of thing that it wouldn't make sense if somebody's sitting there with an exclamation saying, "Oh, collect this for me, and I'll give you that." I'd be like, "Oh yeah, buddy, no problem." Oh hey, what's that by your ear? Ah ah ah! That's my knife. You're dead. All right, now I'm taking yeah. whatever you had, you know, and that would you know violate the spirit of the game potentially, cause you know NPCs would just get ganked. I think. Um, so it just doesn't make sense. Leave them out. They don't. They aren't needed. <laughs> they really aren't needed. Yeah, well, not... Re Romeo says something here that I actually was thinking about, but I was just assuming that it was going to be in the game. He said maybe the devs could create a a buildable cover for a campfire. Is that not something? A buildable cover for campfires? Like there, there's no cover that you can just build because really it doesn't have to be a special quote-unquote campfire cover you just need something that's gonna allow the smoke to escape and keep your fire dry yeah I would imagine they'll have something yeah wait create admissions give you 20 bullets for maybe yeah um I think you meant 30 cans of beets. 20 bullets for 30 cans of beets. Uh, that sounds like a pretty good deal. 20 bullets can go really quickly. 30 cans of beets. You'll be farting beets for a while, but that can last you a long time. That's a pretty good deal. Or if you're the one who's giving 20 bullets for 30 cans of beets, uh, I kill you and take your bullets. <laughs> or I die trying to kill you taking your bullets. But either way, you're not getting those 30 cans of beets. Right. <laughs> so you can sleep in a bed to heal. Now this isn't just like, oh, I've got, you, you really got to work the, uh, the mute button when you're typing there, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um... So you're, it's not just like, oh, I'm wounded, I can sleep it off. It's a combination of like being able to just get some healing in general, but also being able to kind of restore yourself from being in a tired state, being exhausted. Um, exhaustion is something that will settle in for a character the longer that you're you know, up and around doing stuff without sleeping, without resting. Um, the worst things are going to be for you. You're probably going to regenerate a lot slower. You might stop. I I love to see things like you just lose your appetite. You won't eat beyond fifty percent food and water. Um, you know that sort of stuff would be fantastic. Yeah, for sure. Excuse me. Excuse you. Listen to this guy. Um, so, I mean, what, what kind of things are you looking for with, like, a, a bed healing mechanic or just waiting to see what they put in? Well, I would say it depends on how... I think there needs to be something that that is some sort of risk. Uh, just being able to find a bed and heal there is going to be too easy, maybe. Should there so be a I time don't... limit? I don't know. I don't. I don't know what kind of risk that you could have because wait, making people wait and be incapacitated is a problem because people will stop playing and get bored or walk away, and you don't want that to happen. And I, I, I don't want to wait five minutes or ten minutes to heal all the way or whatever it is. However, if you are in the zombie apocalypse in real life and you lay down to sleep and uh, you, you're you probably going to feel better a little bit the next day but there's also the chance that another survivor comes in and uh, slices your face off yep this is true so there needs to be that some kind of, of survival aspect in the sleeping as well <laughs> yeah I think I got the right one on that guy. I think he had the uh, the wrong way on that uh, uh, character. I mean, though, don't don't be comparing like H one Z one to other games. They're, they're different games. They're different games. Well, his his <laughs> name suggests uh, yeah troll anyway. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> anyway um, yeah. I think it'd be nice if there's like 
different options like not only the amount that you need to rest uh but also if there's kind of two different modes of rest like a um mm-hmm. a light rest versus uh, a full rest which is, the difference is light rest maybe it doesn't restore you as much or as quickly but you're able to have things kind of pull you out of it like sounds nearby and being right. able to use you know things for awareness to get out of it versus a full rest you'll do it faster but you're completely kaput you have no awareness unless somebody literally comes up and you know kicks you in the head and farts in your face um so it's i I think that'd be a really nice feature so you know that and i guess a meter for how unrested how how un um or how I guess tired you are, how exhausted, and that's something I think will be part of the the health and wellness system that we'll be seeing with the uh, the improved interface. I don't know if that stuff is in yet, um, but they talked about it during the Q and A. Power nap for the win. <laughs> yes, yeah, serial. <laughs> Pain relievers. Break sprain of legs. Splint. Yeah, bleeding. Yeah, yeah. All that stuff. All that stuff. Yeah, I mean, all that makes sense. But and there's got to be something... Something... I, I don't know. There doesn't have to be something else. But if you're going to have a bed heal you... Because in Seven Days to Die, beds don't heal you. Bed is just a place where you spawn. So if you're going to be able to sleep to heal, there's got to be some kind of risk-reward factor in that. Yeah. Gmod Apple, yes, the game will be free when it's live, uh, or at least in open beta, but it's going to start off in early access, which is paid to access $20 on Steam relative to your region. There you go. Um, <clears throat> I, have a, I have a good solution. Hmm. There's a 1% chance you die in your sleep, period. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is the point of that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. To make it, to make it a risk. James Bond yeah, MacGyver yeah. doesn't die in his sleep. That's so unheroic. There's a small chance if you want to sleep and you want to heal all the way, there's a very small chance that something will kill you while you're sleeping and you die. No. No. Why not? What's no. wrong with that? Because <laughs> it's a random Just... element that has no... That's That's one of the things that I think they're trying to remove is random elements that they want things to be things that happen because you know something some actual circumstance prompted it to happen a random one percent chance that you die that you chose that you needed healing yeah you chose to do that instead of finding a splint or whatever and putting an rng death sentence on that is terrible that's gonna make players (laughs) quit (laughs) that's what it is it's an rng death sentence Oh, I think that'd be if, awesome. if that's what people want, they can go play the Gods Must Be Watching or Gods Will Be Watching, whatever the hell that game is. Apparently that game just murders you because RNG dictates that you there's no perfect way to get through. And it's just going to be frustrating and like painful to get through. And I don't want that to be the case for H1C1. That's I don't think they want that to be the case either. If you die in your sleep, it's because something gnawed off your face while you're trying to sleep or... Somebody poured poured uh, poison in your ear like uh, Hamlet, um, but you know, dying in your sleep that that's just such a terrible mechanic to have. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It, it would well, make it, it seem make like sense. a cheap no. It make it seem like a cheap game. It'd make it seem like a bug or something. Well, you there could be something that happens to you. It, I'm not saying that you just like get a black screen that's like, oh, you died in your sleep, you jerk. Like, but, you know, would would you have some sort of like reward then of of going to sleep? Is 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 it just going to be you? Have okay, a free I'll give you this. It... I'll give you this. If you've had a lot of alcohol and you've had a lot of swizzle and you try to sleep it off, it puts you into some sort of weird hallucinogen mini game, and if you don't survive that, then you die in your sleep. <laughs> How about that? Can we can we compromise on that? Is that okay? Would that work? <laughs> well, I like that also. <laughs> <laughs> Let's settle on that and move on to the next subject. So wait, 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 wait. If you have a system, so let's say they do have a system to where you can lay in bed and you can be fully healed 100% within one minute, 30 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever it is. 
Is that the and you have no mm-hmm. risk to in doing that? Is that the right system though? Uh, I don't know. That there's ever no risk. I don't know. That there's ever no risk in doing anything in H one Z one because there's that's, always that's potentially my... someone following you. That's my point. But if you get into your house that's all, you know, your compound that's all boarded up and all that, they're not going to get in within 10 seconds, right? So Yeah, it should, not, be, it should be faster than 10 seconds. I'm thinking like three to five minutes minimum, like 15 if you're just like completely out of it sort of thing. And then you'll still have to get up and find food and water afterward. Right. So... so you you're saying that you you sh- it should just be a longer time frame to heal up properly cuz that works because that means that there could be danger coming cuz if it's yeah. if it's something very short then there's going to be no danger ever in healing yourself but i mean it's it's like the difference of if you've been if your character's been around for like 15 minutes and you're just taking a quick nap to top off before you take a big journey versus your character has been right. alive for literally 24 right. in game you know or 24 real world hours and you know they still haven't slept yet they're they're probably already like hallucinating at that point they're already like basically in level two swizzle mode um just because of sleep deprivation um so there's there is a quote here though that i think really settles this and uh um answers the subject james bond macgyver's last words are always stay here i'll draw their fire so okay yeah, he, <laughs> so he's not going to die in his sleep. He's going to die, you know, saying that line and then heroically dying while drawing their fire or whatever. Well, the funny part about people like that is that he's probably more equipped to survive while he's drawing their fire than he is uh, waking up to a zombie by biting his face off. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Yeah, SMS message when you're offline. You're awake with chest pain. Reply with find a doctor to survive. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that would actually be terrible because I am so bad at waking up to, to phone sounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, when you log in, and this is not part of sleep. Sleep and log in are separate systems. If you log in, where you log in is where you logged out. What you have in your inventory when you log in is what you had in your inventory when you logged out. Unless you logged out while you were in the course of combat or being flagged for combat and did not make a proper log out and were basically caught with the whole combat logging thing, at which point you'll probably log in and find yourself dead because you were still not removed from the server and they came up and killed you. <laughs> so, you know, don't log because out that's while... that's system that yeah. there, right? Well, don't log out while you're in combat, basically. Like, if you if you log out while you're in combat, it, it's no free ride. You don't, you don't get to keep your stuff. You might get lucky that nothing kills you. Right. Yeah, but that's definitely, and this is this goes back to, um, you know, even before Planet Side Two. But Planet Side Two was definitely something that reminded them that they needed a mechanic like this, because people uh, uh, pilots would bail out of their aircraft because initially aircraft being destroyed didn't give you any points, and the pilot bailing and committing suicide also didn't give you any points. So they at least made it that when the pilots bailed out of the aircraft you would get the points for causing them to die. Uh, and then later on, they also added it. So the aircraft itself also counts as a kill in its own points. Um, but yeah, initially people were just bailing. It was like, I'm going to die. Screw you. You don't get points for me. Yep. Yeah. House permissions. So they default to the builder. What's the death penalty? You lose your equipment. You keep your recipes on most servers, but you lose your equipment. And there's no map, so there's no map that you're going to lose. If there's a map that you have, it was a physical item, and it's left with you your corpse. It. You've lost it. Someone else might Unless pick it up. Unless you can get your corpse back, yeah. 
and see all the. Um, I the... have heard though, if you die in H one Z one, you die in real life. Unconfirmed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were uh, we were discussing that earlier. Uh, yeah. I can't remember. Were you there when we were discussing that? I must have been. You might have been. I don't know. I bring I that up a been. lot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so house permissions will default to the builder, and the builder can assign folks uh, access. There's also going to be a lock code system. Say so you assign whatever the four code, uh, four digit code is or whatever for the lock, and that's what it is. And unless people know it, they're not getting in. I hope it's more complex than four digits. Four digits, you know, someone can figure that out eventually. Right. But I also hope it's something where when you go back to lock it afterward, you actually have to go through and spin the uh, the numbers back to a different position. Otherwise, you know, if you just close it up, somebody will just be able to, you know, pull it open again because there's, you know, it's already in the unlocked positions. It would be nice to add that little kind of puzzle element to it, but at the same time, that might get kind of annoying and tedious to people. It's just like, no, I just want my place locked when I leave. <laughs> I don't think that's as annoying and tedious as it is safe. Uh, I mean, because there's got to be a way. There's going to be a way to break codes and to to get into stuff that's locked, right? So, in order to save yourself from getting that, make it as hard as possible for someone else. That's just the gameplay mechanic. That's true. I just hope that, you know, it's not just going to default to 0, 0, 0, 0 every time. Right. No, I agree. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, if, you know. If, if you say, well, screw that, well, then just get your stuff broken into if you don't want to try. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Then don't keep your own stuff. <laughs> yeah. The one many um, Oculus Rift support, yes, at some point. Um, the entire Forge Light engine will eventually have Oculus Rift support. Uh, Planet Side 2, I think they've said they're going to have it. Pretty sure Landmark, EverQuest Next are going to have it. Uh, H1Z1 most likely will have it as well. I might be I mistaken, want to play on but Oculus Rift before I get excited about that, because right now I just don't care. Actually, I'm waiting for the um, <clears throat> the 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 Google Cardboard and some of those systems to be more advanced. It's basically uh, a cardboard box that you put your phone in, and instead of shooting the beams, you know, shooting the image two separate ways, so one eye sees one and one eye sees the other, or having goggles to kind of mm -hmm. you know separate the image it's literally you've got the left eye image here and the right eye image here and it just gives you you know proper 3d it's really funny right. but it works so I'm... apparently um microsoft is actually working on something oops microsoft is working on something to where it projects your game into your gaming space so i have my xbox set up in my living room and it would project, say I'm playing football, it would project like the sidelines on the stadium and, and my coach and all that. Yeah, I've seen that to... thing. I saw it a couple of years ago, actually. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Yeah, that seems really cool. Survival game. Oh, immersed. the one Manny, I think you found it, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, so, scrolling down here a little bit further. Grouping or friends lists? No. So I'm hoping we'll be able to um, use not only an in-game friends list as well as our Steam friends list. Um, both would be great. But it sounds like for grouping and group-related stuff, initially they want to give us as few systems as possible and let us try yeah. to figure it out and see how well it works like that. And if it works well, great. And if it doesn't, you know, they'll add more systems to uh, to. Support. But it's an as we need it sort of thing. If we don't need the full Planet Side Two style, you know, squads and outfits and all of that sort of organization, then, you know, they don't they're not going to put it in. I don't really think they need it. Yeah, I mean, this is the zombie freaking apocalypse. Your friends aren't even your friends at this point if they're hungry. <laughs> That's true. So not convinced. I don't Oculus know. Rift. We uh, we just watched. Um, well, I just watched uh, Ventilus. He's another streamer. He played a little bit of The Last of Us on stream the other day, 
and neighbors are coming over, breaking through doors. I know they were infected or whatever, but he shot him in the face. You know, it's it's what you're going to do. <laughs> yep. Your neighbor wants to feed his kid, but you want to feed your kid. You're going to shoot him in the face. This is true. And eat that sweet, sweet human, ah, uh, delicious, uh, no, disgusting. Disgusting gamey. human flesh, disgusting, yeah. gamey, uh, full of preservatives and parasites that are just ready to do some damage yeah. in your system. Yeah, mm. I mean, to be, to be serious, though, grouping and friends list, I, I see a need for friends list, just so you know when your friends are online. Grouping, not as much. <laughs> Not like a not like a set UI that that allows you to group up and have <laughs> nice little markings showing each other and in a different colors and I don't like all that for this game. Cycles McCurts cannot confirm or deny he has copious notes. <laughs> I know we have copious notes. I think we're still only on page three of eight. Yeah, <laughs> I can confirm, and uh, since he can't confirm or deny. I can confirm that he actually they are actually making this game off of what we say. <laughs> so uh, you're welcome. Yeah, oh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> so far I think they're making it based off what uh Tessichka is saying considering she was the one who got an item in the game. Oh, there you go. That survival borscht. Mm -mm. <laughs> something to do with those cans of beets. <laughs> Just something. Uh, beats. So, uh, and then the other thing about the friends list is the idea that we will be able to spawn, we are going to be able to spawn near where our friends are. So, it makes sense to, um, you know, have some sort of friends list. Otherwise, how are you going to be able to know who or what you're trying to spawn near? Right. Yep, I agree with that. Yeah, Cycles, it is a great game. I've seen a lot of people playing it. I personally haven't gotten it yet, but definitely on the plan. Um, for sure, for sure. Survival stuff is... Uh, survival games are starting to get really, really good now. It's uh, Yes, they are. It's pretty nice. I've been getting into a lot more of them recently just because H1Z1's coming out, and I've been so hyped about it, so I've been playing, like, a bunch of different survival games. So good. But they don't hold a candle to H1Z1, honestly. <laughs> well, they're different products, different scope, different scale, different development team. You know, it's a completely different sort of thing. Even yep. before H1Z1 began, you know, we can look at the Forge Light engine in Planet Side 2 and a lot of that technology that kind of built up to it. And that's already, that's a great starting point for any project. Yeah, for sure. So the karma system, um, karma systems have been requested. You do good things, you gain karma. You do bad things, you lose karma. Not at the start of early access, but eventually, and it will add it on some servers. The seems like overwhelming um, mentality at SOE is screw karma systems. You damn Care Bears. Uh, now, I know there's probably some folks, you know, a lot of people have whatever reasons to play on whatever types of games, but personally, I don't see myself playing with the Karma system that much. Uh, other than role-playing servers, I don't really, or people trying to role-play, I don't really see the Karma system really factoring in. You know, at the end of the day, you know, in a survival uh, situation, in an apocalypse like this, you know, it isn't doing good or bad that keeps you alive. It's not getting injured and having access to food and water and shelter. And if you have to be a horrible person and, and kill a lot of people and do a lot of bad stuff to do that, well, you do what you got to do. But at the end of the day, you're still alive. Yep. So, you know, for, for that's, this... That's the kind of karma system, the only kind of karma system I want is the karma system where... You where there is none, obviously. Uh, you make a name for yourself one way or another. If you are the most notorious murderer on the server, then someone's going to come get you. Yep. And that's the only way it should be. One, because you have a, a crap load of stuff because you've been murdering everyone. And uh, 
too, because you're a dick. So yep. go kill him. Yep. It's uh, in the community to do with the game. Does it have an API, or will it not be set up for additions? Uh, initially, I don't believe there's going to be any modding available, any uh, external modding by players. But I think that will eventually change down the road. Um, how how much and what the extent is, we don't know. Um, and it might be something that's actually done through Player Studio uh, to further kind of separate the process from the game itself. No idea. But yep. that's, you know, it's the sort of thing that if we really want a specific system, a specific server, a specific configuration, we can, you know, rally for it. There's the, uh, there's the tickets to get on the fancy servers. I believe there is the, the tokens or whatever to kind of bid for different server types. I don't believe that system's gone away. So, you know, being able to kind of vouch for the type of servers that you want to play on is, I believe, one of the things that will be possible. And then if it's something that a lot of people really want, it will, um, you know, they'll be able to make it. Stop making those sounds. That They just happen. Yeah. But That's I nice. heard it. I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> All the people out there heard it. <laughs> <laughs> These sounds are normal. They're just, they're just sounds. These sounds are not Here. normal. <laughs> the, the phone is way behind me now. Okay. Um... Good and bad's a matter of opinion anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, if you, you know, take a shot and you hit your target and you hit them where you intended to shoot them, that's good. If that was somebody's head, well, you know, that might not be as good, but at least you set out to do the thing you meant to do. So A for it's effort. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Modding is very hard to do without allowing hacks or exploits. Yeah, exactly. Possible, but not a priority yet. Yeah. Yeah, and, and just like I said, it, they're good and bad don't matter in the apocalypse. It's it's the law of survival. There is no right and wrong anymore except feed the people that you want to feed and make sure that you're not dying. Unless you play on a server with a karma system. Then you got to be a nice guy. Or, I don't know, a lightning bolt from the Lord himself strikes you down, I guess. I, <laughs> I, I don't know what the what the punishment's going to be, honestly. Yeah, honestly, I, I don't even see... I, I don't see a reason for that. It probably will be a thing, but to me, there's no reason to have something like that because it's just stupid in a survival game. There's absolutely no point to be the good guy or whatever if you don't want to be because it is survival. Yeah, the one many they will be adding a lot of variations of their own, but I don't think they really need any mods and anything outside of the initial. They could just give us one version of H1Z1 and say this is what it is, and it would still be amazing, and people would love yeah. it, and there'd be like a million people playing it worldwide pretty much all the time. Uh, For sure. I'm not worried about that. That is going to happen. <laughs> There's gonna be it's there's it's it's gonna be at the top of the uh, the Twitch uh, page when you go and search for uh, what games people are playing. You're gonna have all of your Dota style mobas and all of that stuff, but then right up there in front of them, H one Z one, one yeah, million baby. players. And and uh, Crimcheck and Neurotoxin will be right there at the top, number one and two. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. No? I don't know. I... No, it's not gonna be a thing. Okay, whatever. I don't know. I'm a <laughs> Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I There's... already, uh, Dave1Z1 said he'll tweet the crap out of me when I'm doing my 96 hour, so. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Be... You're going to be, you know, your, your, your marathon's going to be probably holding out better than the servers are. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> that could be true. Cycles McHurts, I expect some tweets from you too, man. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> I already, I already have your colleague there. Yeah. I like uh, karma. The worst karma you have, the worst karma you have, the higher chance that RNG will kill you while you sleep. <laughs> yes, yes. There you go. That's how the killing in your sleep thing works for sure. Oh. <laughs> so, players playing as zombies. It's on the wish list. It's not an early access feature. I'm totally fine with that. In fact, beyond being fine with that. I'm excited for that. 
get all of the major systems in place, get everything working solid for the normal player experience, and then start messing with it by allowing us to play as zombies. There's no rush. This game's going to be around for a good long time. I'm not worried about it. When we do that, get that as a feature, though, it's going to be a lot of fun. Because I'm sure players are going to be able to do some ridiculous things as zombies to be able to trick uh, other players. When I think about that, I think of the game Hidden in Plain Sight, where basically is a party game where you and a bunch of other people are interspersed with a bunch of little NPCs kind of going about their stuff in different ways. Mm-hmm. And like you have to kind of tell who the other players are and sift them out from the NPCs. Um, yeah, that's exactly like um, Watch Dogs multiplayer. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so, basically, um, in Watch Dogs multiplayer, you uh, you're one of one of two people. You either hack somebody or you be hacked. And if you hack somebody, you try not to be found among everyday life. If you are the one being hacked, you try to find that person. Yeah. So. And, yeah. I think that's where really the fun cool. is: is finding a zombie horde, and kind of blending in waiting till somebody starts get occupied and maybe one or two of them start rushing at them and then you kind of go off to the side to flank them so when they think oh okay so i've got them funneled down here i just need to cover this doorway you come busting in from the side window and they're like ah damn or probably more shit I think that's I think that's the probably more the appropriate response at that point. <laughs> probably, probably. Yeah. But uh, player zombies, um, you can't just implement it willy nilly. It has to be a really thought out system. It's really, mm-hmm. you know, fledged out exactly how they want it, or it's going to be stupid. Honestly, you know that could actually be where the level ups and progression is. I kind of think about uh, Lord of the Rings Online initially. How the um, I was just going to say that <laughs> the, the the PvP system works that you uh, you yeah. play as the um, the the Urica or whatever yeah. the um, the the aggressors, the orcs, the the evil peoples, and as yeah, as you uh, as you play on and you get tougher, you can use higher quality creatures and you know that sort of stuff so i could see that sort of thing it may be being like a zombie virus mutator sort of thing and when you die you get to you know throw some random attributes and have the mutator produce a different zombie the next time you uh you get to play as one yeah i would love like starting out as the slow dumb zombie and then as you as you quote unquote level up you get to be the fast smart zombie yeah that would be fun be able to go full on Arnold from the Predator movie and cover yourself with mud and moss. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Be pretty cool. Uh, so, 28 and a half minutes into the video or so, they talk about restraints. Not in this video up here, but the, um, uh, the Q&A from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, restraints. So, handcuffs are being worked on for post-early access. Um... That's cool. And I, I'm yep. pretty sure it'll be more than just handcuffs, like rope, uh, zip ties, chain, you know, that sort of stuff. There's all sorts of stuff you can use to potentially restrain people. And I wonder if there's going to be different varying levels of restraint, like, you know, get somebody in prone position and full on hog tie. And it's like, yeah, you're not moving. <laughs> <laughs> what would that feel like to, what would that be like um, gameplay wise to the player though? I I would think the only way to do it was, would be that player dies and you now control an quote unquote NPC. No, you if you're if you're hogtied, you can potentially like you know crawl around really really slowly or roll. Um, potentially, yes. you know, I guess try to find something to untie yourself or potentially wiggle loose. Um, Is that going to be something that's fun for for the person being hogtied though? Because. Uh, it, well, if you're being restrained, game. you're being restrained. It's already something no, that you're not necessarily... Dying, dying has to be fun also. That's right? true. So, if you're being hogtied and you're laying there waiting for a person to kill you and then they just leave and you're crawling around for 15 minutes because it's super slow trying to find something, but they put you in a, a, a concrete room where there's nothing, what happens at that point? You hit the you hit the the insta die button and then go create another character. Maybe so. That or maybe you call your friends over. You know, if there's you know not playing solo all the time too. 
<laughs> yeah, but what if you are? Well, I mean, there's there's times I'm gonna be playing solo, and and I don't know. It, it just seems like a it, that would be a stupid system to make it so you just like. Well, if you're playing solo, I guess you're screwed. You know, <laughs> but that might be the case anyway. If you're playing solo, like, what's the difference being hogtied or just having like eight people surround you with guns? Sure, until they kill you. You know, you fight until they kill you. Fine. Mm-hmm. But being hogtied and just left there with no choice, you can't kill yourself, they won't kill you, like what happens? Well, if you're handcuffed in a room with the door locked, like that's the same thing. Even though you can walk, you're still not really able to get out. Right. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. Good point. Good point. I don't know. It should be interesting to see what they'll have to do with that for uh, yeah. for restraints and such. Or if it's the sort of thing that you can eventually like get out of handcuffs after like three minutes of struggling, you take some health damage and lose some stamina and your hands are injured or something, or one of your hands is or injured. Some, even some kind of incredibly hard minigame puzzle type deal to get yeah. yourself out of the hand. It's like break I mean, the, you know. Th- this is James Bond MacGyver, so really all they do True. need is like uh, a push pin or like a toothpick or, you know, something like that, and they should be able to break out of it. Or all you have to do is put cloth over your hand and then... <laughs> They disappear. <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Not a real thing? Magic uh, isn't real. I don't think. I don't think that's a real thing. That's a green screen oh. behind me, folks. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, trying to prevent kill on site. New player really doesn't have anything worthwhile. Yeah, some old batteries and old flashlight couple bandages and you know a couple flares great so you're gonna build a house out of flares and then yeah so you know that's the there's definitely the aspect that you don't really know who you're gonna be able to trust but at the end of the day you might not have a choice most of the time it's like well i can either work with this person or the 20 zombies that are attacking them are going to be attacking me no matter how far i go Right. Yeah, James Bond MacGyver Houdini. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> Einstein boy. No, but Manny Manny is reiterating my point. The the suicide button does feel cheap, so there's got to be something, though. Because it's my point. You can't just sit in a room and expect to starve to death. Because starving to death isn't something that's going to be super quick. Probably they not. To catch you on a full stomach, you're sitting there for an hour waiting to starve to death. Uh, this couldn't take any longer. <laughs> I can feel my food <laughs> digesting. Uh. All right, enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, they're going to... It's it's an interesting thing trying to limit kill on site. But... It's one of those things where I think they've made the world difficult enough that you're better off with people, even if they're people you can't necessarily trust, than trying to go at it solo because a wolf will be able to kill you. Um, yeah. You know, a bear will obviously be able to kill you. Um, you know, just a few zombies is more than enough to kill you. Or one well placed zombie when you're not expecting it. Yep. I would almost rather, though, with a system that they're that they're, with the trying not to make it so kill on site, as if when you got to a server you stuck there for a while, like maybe you had to stay there for a month, because then you can make a name for yourself. So if you see the guy that's named XX Dick X, you know whatever, and he's just he's kill on site to everybody. He's I mean, and he. Uh, is going to be there for a month, he's not going to be necessarily killing everyone because he's going to be worried about his own survival at that point because his name's going to get out. Gotcha. Uh, on one hand, on the other hand, like if I log in to start playing and my friends are like, hey, I'm over on such and such server, it's like, oh, yeah. I'm over on this other server. Well, Oh, well, I'll see you in a month. That's no. I could see That's, at the most. I could see maybe like a a six hour cooldown 
uh, like you can't go back to a server that you've left uh, to go to another right. server for like six hours or something. But even then, that's limiting. Like if you're if you're trying to test something, especially early on, because we will be trying to test things. If you're trying yeah. to test things like the same geolocation on five different servers, and three right. of them it works on, two of them it doesn't, and you're trying to cycle back through them to figure out the results, but then you get blocked because it's a restriction. That's going to be really, really, really annoying. It's going to limit our ability to help SOE, um, right. you know, find these sorts of weird things. If something well, like that is potentially going to happen, well, it's definitely not going to be something on, on early access. I, I'm, I'm basically, I'm, I'm thinking of more the release of the game, like how it's going to be during release, not as as much how it's going to be during early access for that. Um, release, it's a, it's important for everyone to try everything, no matter what. Or, or not release, I'm sorry, early access. So it's it's a little bit different, I think. And I, I get your point for the you know month maybe a little bit long, but maybe make it cost coins or tickets or whatever. Um, even if it's a free server, if you want to switch before that, then, you know, some kind of ticket system. I could see maybe there being a character limit. You can't have more than 10 total characters on your account across all the servers. Well, then you just delete one. Yeah, that's fine. I don't know, because, uh, like I said, if you want to keep it from being the KOS... So, the thing about EverQuest is that there were PKs and there were anti-PKs. And the PKs killed were, everyone. Were and all the servers... Were, killed the PKs, only. Were all the servers the uh, PvP worked, all the time? But yeah, well, the reason why that worked is because... You made a name for yourself. Everybody knew who you were. And you weren't going to leave the server. But so, it was it was only PvP in that game. There are no PvE servers. In I'm, what a, game? I'm asking you for EverQuest. Oh no, there were only two PvP servers, and the rest were PvE. Okay, so that was only it only factored on a minority of the servers, right? Right, but that's why it worked in on those servers. And this is going to be a PvP game where they're... I mean, a game where PvP will be available on, on every server. So... Or almost every server. So, really, in order to, to keep those servers to where we can... We can... Um, I, don't, I don't even know how to say it. Law them. Like, we can make the law and, and keep... You know, keep order ourselves is to have something to where, you know, this person is going to have a name for themselves, so they're either going to leave, um, which I guess is fine, or, you know, they're going to be KOS. I, I guess leaving is fine, but it's still not going to stop someone from going on an all-night killing spree uh, or, you know, a couple-week killing spree even and just kill every single person. You know, Well, come to be able to do a killing spree means you need to have the weapons and the situations to be able to go on a killing True. spree. And even to be able to do that is luck because you go like, all right, I'm going to ambush somebody on this bridge. And you're waiting and waiting. And all of a sudden you turn around and you see there's a bear charging at you. It's like, well, the best laid plans of mice and people being eaten by bears. Yeah. So, you know, there's there's definitely going to be a lot of uh, things to prevent somebody from being able to just go on a killing spree. The equipment required and the amount of, you know, risk. Also, the fact that you're just going to be generating heat to kill a player in the world generates a lot of heat. The act of doing it, the, you know, now there's a corpse that's luring things around in the world. Um, you know, it's it's not a silent act. It's not a stealthy act. Even if you kill somebody, like, just walk up on them and you know, slit their throat or whatever, it's still going to have, um, you know, some lasting impact in the world. Let me get that video going again. Actually, we're getting fairly close to the end here. We made some pretty decent progress in the notes this time. Yeah. I'm surprised. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, like, I'm going to be, I'm going to walk up to somebody and I'm going to sl slice their throat. I'm going to, you know, try to long range somebody in the face with, a, with an arrow. That's going to be me that does that sometimes. But... <laughs> I should have consequences for that, right? Yeah. You'll see the reverend standing up on the hill, and I'm going to be, instead of having my arms up waiting for my children, I'm actually just going to shoot you in the face, and that's going to be a thing. But I should have consequences for that. Everyone's going to know the reverend could shoot you in the face. Well, yeah, I mean, but that's the thing. Somebody who's got a gun could shoot you in the face anyway, even if you know who they are. So like, that's not anything special. 
<laughs> if somebody's, if somebody's got a gun aimed at you, it's like, well, I might not get shot, but you know, there's a gun <laughs> aimed at me. <laughs> Karma assistant like GTA five. I, I, like I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't really think that there needs to be a karma system. I'm fine with it being kind of the standard that most servers don't have a karma system and that if somebody if you did something that's so heinous that people need to track you down and kill you, they actually have to track you down to kill you. Right. That it's no there's no easy system. There's no um you know, bonus or incentive built into it or anything either. It's you know, you're doing this because you want justice on the server, not because you know, you're going to get some magic golden PP7 or whatever for completing it. Have you seen, um, it, it, it was happening on GTA 4, I think, more, and they had those that group of kids that would role play, and they would, like, do, like, the Alaskan State Troopers or whatever, and they one person would be the villain and then or, you know, the outlaw, and then they would all chase them down and stuff. I could see that being a thing for... H1Z1, especially when you have, uh, you can like turn it into a show, an actual show, like a cops type show. Especially when they have the SOE mode in there, I think that's gonna that'll be funny to see what people can do with that. That's just way off topic, but still. Well, that's that's basically what Arma Three Altus Life is all about. Is um, you know people doing the you know playing on that game server in that game world but full on role playing it like that's from what i understand that's what that's all about people playing as the cops and they'll pull you over and you have to actually deal with them and such and you know there's right. consequences to things yep <laughs> i'm i'm RPing a reverend <laughs> they made I'm, it a, sound... I'm a real life reverend now what's up they made it sound like you would change your appearance really food bar like what are your eyes going to glow red or something if you're uh if if your uh, karma is starting to get bad, are you gonna start having this like nasty filth poop cloud around you, like pig pen from the the what's that, the peanuts or whatever? You know that's <laughs> the I I wonder what kind of you know punishment or whatever would come along with that. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Like I said, karma, a karma system that they set up doesn't make sense in a survival game it doesn't but i'm sure there's you know there's going to be people who want that and sure. you know and it'll be there it'll be there for them and i just like there's people that are going to want pve only servers yeah fine it'll be there but and once again doesn't make sense. i see that for once again a lot of wanting those sorts yeah. of things to uh, have it be the moral decision that you and everybody else handcuff the person and you know, push them with the Q button until they're, you know, off the edge of the cliff or whatever. And that's, that's how you execute people. <laughs> you know, because if you can't, if they you can't conventionally kill someone, it would take a lot of effort right. to, you know, execute somebody. It's the Salem witch trials again. Yeah. <laughs> Except it's a cliff. Again. Yep. <laughs> Salem witch trials, you push them off the cliff. If they die, then they weren't a witch, and you know they're absolved. Oh yeah, of their crime. And if they if they fly, then they were a witch. And go get your go get your crossbows. Yeah. <laughs> Drown them in the Duke collector. <laughs> yes. I could uh, see I could see some um, of the water torture thing. What what is it called? Waterboarding. Actually, no, not drown drown them in the Duke collector. No, if you dump them in the Duke collector, that's a a, a baptism. In uh, in H one Z one, especially by the reverence do collect. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> no, I can see waterboarding though. You just put a little cloth over their face and then you put them under your do collector. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> I don't I don't know how much of a torture simulator they're gonna have for this game. I think uh, I think they want to minimize that as well. And I don't know. I honestly have no idea. How waterboarding localizes as torture to other countries, um, if that's something like Australia would prevent, for example. So, right. that, well, I'm sure it would. Yeah. So that's it's, it's pretty legitimate torture. It is. It is definitely torture. So, yeah. you know, I don't know if that's the sort of thing that they want, or if the most torturous thing they want to do is surround somebody and be like, "All right, now eat this rotten meat." 
Diamond Man says GTA Five and Infamous both have karma systems, but they're not survival games. Yeah, they're completely different. That's that's not even the same genre by a long shot. Yeah. So we're getting kind of close to the end here. Um, I think it's about time to start wrapping up. So in the beautiful video of gameplay that you folks have been seeing up there has been Adam Clegg and Jimmy Wizenhunt with player unknown lurking in the background behind them and uh it's definitely a really nice session go and watch that it was from yeah. thursday of last week part one of two of the videos available on youtube i think part two of two was just a really short kind of wrap-up sort of thing or i don't know what happened with that but i'm sure you can find that too um, here's the link to that by the way oh thank you very much for posting that for everybody yep. um as for us, well, I'm Legendary Neurotoxin, and of course you can always find me here, uh, Dead Feature, and of course also for people who like the creative sandboxes, Landmark, I do talk shows for that, Live Feature Rant, Theory Forge, and the tour show content and creations, as well as my own work at My Dream as a community manager and QA and I do throw a lot of ideas at them. There's there's no way of saying that, you know, I'm not also a game designer of sorts over there. It's just not on the uh, the job description. Everyone's a game designer at a game <laughs> studio. That's just how it is. Yes. If you're if you're not like pitching ideas and having an investment in the game, it means probably you're probably better. Yeah, it well no, it, it means you're probably bored of the game, so you you might not really care about it that much. So Yeah. Different sort of thing for different sorts of folks. But for me, I'm having a lot of fun with it, and it's it's just ever getting better. Just like Landmark, just like H1Z1, just like a lot of games. Yep. And, uh, yeah, that's... Oh, yeah, and the Who's Gaming Now stuff. That's what uh, Reverend Kremchek and I do uh, all sorts of times of the week. Uh, all sorts of giveaways and fun stuff. And when H1Z1 comes to early access, you can bet we're going to be getting some love in over there. It should be a lot like, yeah. of fun. Yep. And uh, on that note, I'm going to pass it to you, Reverend Kremchek. Why don't you uh, give your wrap-up and let everybody know what you're up to and where people can find you and all that good stuff. Yeah, I am the Reverend Kremchek, and I am a full-time streamer. You can uh, click on my name down here and uh, follow me if you'd like. I am uh, on January... Let's see, what's today? The 23rd? Let's say January 3rd, I'm doing my uh, giveaway for... Uh, the ticket to SOE Live or PAX Prime. There's going to be a lot more information on how you enter that and different things um, coming up. But uh, that's basically a free ticket to those events. I don't pay for travel or anything like or, or accommodations, but you can get a free ticket from me uh, to those events because we did um, surpass our milestone of 2,000 followers. And uh, funny enough, we're getting uh, closer to 3,500. If I gave it another couple weeks, then we would probably get there. Um, but we're not going to probably. So anyway, um, that's going to be happening. Um, I, like Nero said, work on uh, WGN as well. I'm a streamer there. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of awesome stuff there. So so hit that up, and uh, yeah, I, I it's we're having a lot of fun. I like like I said before, I'm doing a 96 hour stream uh, once H1Z1 comes out. That's going to be boss, um, and uh, really just. Uh, Come, come hang out. Come see me. Come find out. Yep, yep. So Do it. that's it. Have a happy Hanukkah, everybody. Have a Merry Christmas. Have a, a Festivus for the rest of us. And uh, I think Kwanzaa then comes after and leads us into the new year. And, of course, we're going to be back next week. So it's not like, you know, there isn't going to be one more show before the end of the year. But, you know, between now and then... Yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. So all you lovely yes. folks out there, have a great time, and I am going to bring this party along. Wait, wait, wait. One sec. What's up? One sec. Aren't I going to be on your show next week also? Or, I mean, at the end of the week? On uh, Theory Forge? On Theory Forge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you? Yeah, Summer yeah. 26th. That's yeah. right. So, yeah. You'll also be also on there. Also see you then. And I'm on here every week. Yep. So we're going to bring this party over to... Loco 2525, um, somebody who also owns an H1Z1 beanie and will definitely be playing and streaming <laughs> along with us on whatever servers are going to be available. I don't know if they're going to have a, a streamers-only server initially, but 
you know, it's yeah, just going to be it's just going to be the wild west out there initially. So it should be a lot of fun. So I will see you folks over there. Thank you very much. Bye bye. And this is what you type: dead feature raid. Dead feature raid. <laughs>